Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Kanich Yeehaw podcast. I'm Natalie. And I'm Jared. And for today's episode, we wanted to talk about anime movies. Uh, but before we do that, <laughs> I want to take over for a second because we recently binged Tekken Bloodline on Netflix, which if you guys have been keeping up, you know, I mentioned it in our uh, What's in Season video recently and how it hadn't come out at the time, but I was kind of like dreading it, but I knew I was going to watch it because I really like Tekken, right? <laughs> so I'm just here to let you guys know that it's not that bad. Yeah, it's nowhere close to as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yes, I thought it was going to like, like it. It's uh, it could be a lot better. Oh yeah, definitely. It could, it's like a yeah. six. Out yeah. Of 10. Like I want to see more of it, you know, but um. So with the three D animating style, obviously I understand why they did it. It's a fa- it's a fighting anime, and if yeah. you want, you know, those like clean looking action scenes, it's really it's much more easier to do it in in a 3D animated style. Uh, Downfall of that, though, is I think that a lot of the characters had dead eyes, um, which made me a little sad. Like, I know that they're supposed to be, like, really stoic characters, like, to begin with, but some of them just, like, no expression, you know, which bothered me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Story-wise, I mean, it's... Tekken 3. Tekken 3 follows it pretty well, honestly, like, pretty well. And like I said, I hope they do continue because... Um, I didn't. I started playing Tekken at Tekken Four, so I would really like to see that one <laughs> personally. Um, and I just want to say, like with the with the fighting, I really, I actually really like how they did the fighting. Yeah, it looked because really good. It, it not only looked really good, but as someone who has like played Tekken and really enjoys Tekken, I feel like it it really did like seem like watching the fights in just a cinematic way yeah like watching the characters characters that i have like you know played as for years um just watching them fight in a more cinematic way mm-hmm. and they definitely like uh stayed pretty true to the characters fighting styles like i i would get, tell you like i would recognize moves um and get like really excited about it because i'd be like <laughs> oh i love whatever they do that and like they did the holds the grabs like all of that was pretty um like in line with the games and it was very nice just like touch you know was having the um the hit effects yeah i was gonna say i really like that they did that yeah having the hit effects also really like um it's just really nice yeah. like i think it makes it um it added an extra punch to it yeah <laughs> um yeah so if you're interested at all in second like i am I mean, it's worth checking out. It's it was six episodes. They're like yeah, it's not very twenty five minutes each. Um, I hope we get more. Anyway, but <laughs> the actual episode that we're doing today is to talk about anime movies. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anime movies, I feel, are like a s- entirely separate category than like anime shows. There's mm-hmm. a lot of things that are different about them than there are with regular shows mm-hmm. or like OVAs. So in the first thing that I want to point out is that there are different types of anime movies. Mm-hmm. I've kind of branched it out into kind of three different ways. So you have a continuation movie, like with Demon Slayer, Mugen Train, mm-hmm. where it's like, here is the show. The movie is kind of like a, an entire season on its own. Yeah. And then whenever the show picks back up, it's going to be take place canonically after, after the, events. the events it's not like like for example the naruto movies the none of the naruto movies are canon mm-hmm. i believe and so like there's a ton of them but they don't really matter to the show mm-hmm. and that takes me to the standalone movies so these are movies that are not entirely like they're not canon okay. so from that though there are two branches within standalone movies. Right. There are movies that are based off of shows and then absolutely standalone by itself. Mm-hmm. So, for example, the Cowboy Bebop show. Right. I mean, the Cowboy Bebop movie. Mm-hmm. So the movie is standalone from the show, but it still is, like, connected to the show. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Like it is, it it has a source material. Yeah, I mean it's in it's in universe, but maybe not canonically in universe. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then on the other hand, we have things like your name, which is completely separate from anything else. It's just like a movie. Yeah, it's thought, just like it's a just, movie. It's just a movie. Right. But I think the one big thing that's that people like separate from uh, movies and anime is how much better they look. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like movies have so much more time. They're typically not like crunched mm-hmm. to make it out. They have a lot more money put into it. Mm-hmm. And so they can have a lot nicer things like... And there are some movies that are, like, you can tell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I kind of call them, like, eye-gasm movies. Mm-hmm. So, like, Bubble, Fireworks, Your Name. These are all movies that, like, the plot is kind of irrelevant because the whole point of the movie is just that, that it, it looks, looks nice. good. Yeah. Yeah. Which, those movies... Uh, I mean, okay. yeah, I mean, they look nice. Yeah, they look nice. Like, <laughs> they look nice, and if you're really into, like, animating, um, uh, yeah. then they are fun to watch from that perspective of just, like, seeing what people can do, like, yeah. with the with the genre, with the, not the genre, with the um, medium. style, the medium, yeah. yeah. So which do you prefer? Do you think you, would you prefer a movie that is kind of poorly edited, or, like, not poorly, it's like show quality animation with um, with like a great story or like one with like an okay story, but the animation is like fantastic. Well, I mean, I prefer, I would prefer a better story, mm-hmm. but like I would still watch both and probably enjoy both. Yeah. Um, the one that comes to mind, I mean, I've seen a couple of movies that I know that you haven't. Yeah. So like... For example, like Penguin Highway, which yeah. is a, a movie that I watch just because I really like penguins and penguins was in the title. <laughs> um, it looks great, but honestly, the the story is kind of confusing, and yeah. because there's there's just penguins everywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what are they doing? I, I don't know. It's like weird, like time things. Yeah. And another one is. Uh, that I I know that I've watched that kind of falls under this is A Whisker Away, which is a Netflix anime mm-hmm. movie. And again, the plot is cute, but it's nothing like mind boggling. But like it's cute, you know. Like I'm not gonna say yeah. that I hated it, right? But I also know that I mean there are so many examples of, of like the be- of the best of both worlds where you can have a great plot and great style. Yeah, like so, Mugen Train. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. Yeah. I mean, there are... I think for me personally, I think plot, like, uh, matters more than how it looks. Mm -hmm. I've definitely watched a couple movies where the plot was confusing and it looked kind of okay. But it was, like, really weird, so it, like, balanced out. Mm -hmm. Um, there's There's a movie... I actually think it might be uh, I don't remember who made this movie it might have been Satoshi Kon actually uh, no maybe I don't remember um, it's called Cat Soup okay and it is like a like what is even happening like the two main characters are cats I don't think I'm pretty sure there's it's a There's no dialogue in the entire Mm -hmm. movie. Um, And the the two main characters are cats. And the little sister, I think, she has, like, her soul stolen. And then the older brother, I think, has to, like, go through this whole, like, trip to, like, get it back. And it's, it's something else. Like, it's one of those movies that, like... They're like, oh, you you recommend to someone that, like, you're like, hey, you want to see something weird? (laughs) Yeah. Because that's, I've I've done that to my friends before. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I still think plot matters more, though, Mm -hmm. for me. I mean, 
anime movies are always going to look nice. Right. There's yeah. not really... Well, I'll put it this way. There's not a popular anime movie that looks bad. Mm-hmm. But, um... So, some... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think... I personally think that movies that have, like, really good visuals, but, like, an okay story, are given, like, way too much credit. (laughs) Okay, they, like, they, like, people rate them way higher than they should be. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I'm going to call out your name. Your name looked fantastic. The story... Meh. And I disagree with you. Yeah, I know. I disagree with you because, like, how can you say the story is meh? I don't... Like, honestly. There's just something about it that, like, I... It's supernatural. It's a romance. There's time stuff happening. I think it's just that, like... I think I've just seen too many anime movies like it. Like, in the sense that it's like, okay, so, you know, I'm not, okay, let me backtrack a little bit. It is not a bad movie. By any means, it is not a bad movie. I just got a little bored watching it. Mm-hmm. And so, like, and people, basically people were saying it's, like, the director is, like, the next Miyazaki. Mm-hmm. And I just don't think that's true. I don't think the style is unique enough to call it Miyazaki. I think in order to, like, be put at that kind of level. And we have a couple of directors that we want to talk about in a little bit. But you're going to... But the people that we want to talk about, they have styles that do not look like their anime shows at all. Yeah. And that, I think, is also important in the sense, like, it makes you wonder if like movies are you it's just easier to like be more like have or have more creative freedom yeah in the sense of like whenever you're making a show obviously like every season so many shows come out right and sometimes it's it's cool to look at ones that are that look different right but most of the times people don't actually gravitate towards those right like, I think of, like, all the little chibi shows that I like to watch. Like, we're watching a chibi show called A Night with a Cat. I mean, you know, these are, like, one-minute shows. Yeah. But I I love that they look different. Like, oh, yeah, personally. Definitely. Whether they're whether it's simpler, like, simpler in some way, or, like, the proportions are even more skewed. But, um, yeah, I think with your name, it's it's pretty. I'm not saying that it's not pretty. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous yeah, movie. Yeah, but it doesn't step outside of the the blueprint of an anime show design yeah. enough to, like, really be something unique. Yeah. And I I recognize that. But I also still think that the story is really cool, and I think that you're a hater. So. <laughs> I, I, might be a little, <laughs> I might be a little bit of a hater. I I I, I, I just think that it was, like a little blown out of proportion um Mm -hmm. because people were like oh yeah this is like the greatest anime movie ever made and i was like i really don't think that's true i think it definitely reopened the 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 genre of anime of of anime movies of the popularity of anime movies oh yeah definitely um because that came out what in 2017 18 18 something 18 somewhere in that area and I mean, from what I remember of that time, is outside of outside of show standalone movies. So I'm not yeah. talking. Um, Megan Train. I'm not. T- yeah, well, it's even before that though. Oh, so I'm, yeah, I'm thinking yeah. like of what's kind of coming out at the time. We we had like um, My Hero Academia movie, probably some Naruto movie, like those, mo- and those were like getting their like own theater showings and whatever, whatever. Yeah. But I mean like the standalone like the the true standalone this is just a movie to be a movie to be enjoyed for what it is kind of movie i mean it definitely reawakened the popularity of those kind of anime movies yeah so 
I think that's pretty cool. I mean, <laughs> you know, I will, I will give credit where credit is due. Um, it, you say reawakened, but I say awakened in general. Like, well, Miyazaki in his early years definitely had his moment. Okay, yeah, I mean, you're right. Yeah. You can't say that he didn't. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I guess I'm thinking. Hello, more only of international our... animation, animation like winner yeah, in America. That's true. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess reawakened would be. I, I guess I'm thinking like. Because in in my consciousness, mm-hmm. um, I haven't really had like an anime movie be shown in theaters, right? That's and what I mean. but like your name, it it became the top grossing anime movie when it came out. Yeah, like of all time, mm-hmm. and that's really crazy, right? Um, because it got like you know u.s theater releases and yes. things like that yeah like we watched it we watched it in theaters but like we a watched special it, <laughs> we watched it on a campus theater yeah which is more it's like going to a cheer screening of something yeah whenever did you we, did we have to pay for it no 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 campus okay. theaters were free for us oh, okay. we showed our id and we got it for free um but yeah i liked your name i thought it was whenever we learned about it like in our class and stuff Mm -hmm. i thought it was really interesting actually i learned sorry no i'm thinking i'm i'm in i'm merging classes right now my bad i was i learned something in a class and i applied it to your name in my brain okay sorry okay (laughs) (laughs) but some a couple of uh directors and Mm -hmm. movie companies that uh that are notable or i'd say are especially notable Mm-hmm. I, I think probably the most notable and famous would be Miyazaki yeah. with Studio uh, Ghibli. Right, definitely. Um, some of the some of the movies that are the most well known would be Spirited Away, mm-hmm. obviously, Princess Mononoke, mm-hmm. and My Neighbor Totoro. Yeah, and he, I mean, there's a bunch more too. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, Those are just like yeah. the three that I think are the most known. Right. Or got my the neighbor most... Totoro being more from knowing the poster than yeah. maybe knowing the contents of the actual movie. Oh my god. <laughs> but because for me, I mean, I would put Kiki. I'll put Kiki's delivery service up there for me personally. Oh, definitely. One. I mean, yeah. my my favorite Ghibli movie is um, Howl's Moving Howl's Castle. Moving Howl's Castle. Yeah, Moving that's Castle. another really good one. Um, and I know that Studio Ghibli, after its huge success with Spirited Away. Mm-hmm. Which I know Princess Mononoke was before that, yeah, correct. Uh, and obviously, so was Many Totoro. Uh, but after the huge success of Spirited Away, I know that um, Disney um, bought the rights to dub yes Ghibli movies, which is what honestly like really helped them become big in the U.S. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so there's that also to consider that. It isn't just Studio Ghibli's, like, working alone, I yeah, guess. Disney... In a way, like, Disney did have a really big hand in promoting their works and in getting their movies in American theaters. Yeah. So At least just in American hands in general. Because I think they might also be the distributors. In America, yeah, yeah. they are. But I remember, like, I remember Ponyo being in theaters. I remember mm-hmm. the, um, the Borrowers. Or the Secret Life of yeah. Bar- I forgot the full title of that movie, but I remember that one being in theaters because I remember Amy Poehler's in it. Like I mean, like they get like you know like they get like famous Americans to also yeah um, dub them, which definitely raised their popularity as well. Mm-hmm, definitely. Um, yes, not to take away from Miyazaki, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Miyazaki's just the director. Yeah. I mean, he did a lot for you know. Okay. There's, like, something that I've always kind of, like, like, wondered. Or, like, there isn't enough credit given to, like, the writers. Mm Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you always get, like, the directors are Mm -hmm. the ones that, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, this is a Miyazaki movie. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, he writes on them, don't they? Doesn't he? I have no idea. I don't know. Um, But, like, though, one thing that makes Studio ghibli movies so good is that the stories are so unique Mm -hmm. and like 
like I mean Miyazaki has to be a writer on them because I mean we learned about in our class all of his influences of like being a child of World War Two and yeah. how that like influences love of flying and how like there's all, seems to always be a flying theme and a nature theme in his um, movies so I mean he definitely has a hand in it right yeah definitely like his vision is definitely a big part of the story mm-hmm. I was just curious about that I don't really yeah. know much about it mm-hmm. maybe something to look into yeah um, but yes um, some Studio Ghibli movies that are basically there's not a bad Studio Ghibli movie really I mean mm-hmm. there are some more obscure ones yeah um, but there's not really a bad one no and but yeah some Studio Ghibli movies to watch Spirited Away Princess Mononoke, My Neighbor Totoro. Mm, I fell asleep watching it. Um, House Moving <laughs> Castle. Yes. And Kiki's, Kiki's Delivery, Delivery Service. Service. Yeah. Those are all some really good Studio Ghibli movies to at least start on. Yeah. Another big name director is Satoshi Kon. Mm-hmm. So Satoshi Kon is a real heavy hitter. Basically yeah. everything that he makes is good. He hasn't... I don't think he's made like a ton not like no he doesn't have a huge filmography if i remember correctly yeah but some like real heavy hitter ones of it are perfect blue tokyo godfathers and paprika Mm -hmm. so those that's at least your introduction to satoshi khan um so perfect i i'd say one thing that makes his movies like or hmm, i was gonna say because his movies are really serious they're thrillers yeah they're they're suspense kind of movies in their action they're, they're either like heavy on the suspense or heavy or on the action yeah i would say granted i haven't seen tokyo godfathers um and i just looked it up basically the only other notable one outside of these three is millennium actress okay yeah. uh other th- other than that it looks like it's mostly like i mean you know er- early works whether you want to group in some early works or not right um but like actual like feature length films um yeah but for the most part satoshi satoshi Kun's films are made for an older audience yeah definitely um as opposed to studio ghibli which is um uh, I'd say kid? it's mostly for a younger audience. Yeah, for a younger audience. I don't want to say it's necessarily kid friendly because there are like serious themes. Yeah. In Studio Ghibli movies, but it's definitely more whimsical. Maybe is a better mm-hmm. way to say it. Um, but Satoshi Kon makes more like, I guess you could. Um, they're mostly adult movies. Yeah, they're mostly adult movies, with like I mean, like, sex and yeah like murder <laughs> yeah I mean, you know like <laughs> so toshi khan has some really dark themes in his movies yes and so if you're a little like squeamish maybe don't watch the toshi khan movies yeah i mean i'd say like perfect blue is a very dark it's very cool. disturbing movie yes it is but it is also a very powerful movie mm-hmm. and is also it's really good <laughs> yeah it's also really good yeah it's just not necessarily for everyone yes yes mm-hmm. agreed um and then paprika is a little bit more lighthearted than uh perfect blue but still has squeamish elements yeah. in it definitely <laughs> i i think of paprika like perfect blues like little sister it's like there were they have the same general idea but like paprika is like peppy and yes. it's like ooh, look at how quirky i am you know <laughs> but they are in general kind of the same idea but perfect blue is a lot more mature yes definitely um did you have a oh yes so uh, i basically just wanted my little mention was going to be um masahi yuasa which i talked about on a different episode um when we just did like a little artist highlight i picked yuasa because i love yuasa's Mm -hmm. art style and um i think that he's a it's a really um yeah, I mean, just like how he directs, I think is really cool and freeing mm-hmm. looking. Um, movie wise, I mean, like I, 
Yuasa, probably best known for Devilman and Crybaby, um, yeah. which is a show. But he does do a lot of movies as well, like Lou Over the Wall, which is kind of a newer one. Actually, it came out the same time as yeah. Devilman and Crybaby, I think. Um, the Night of Short Walk on Girl. And then, what is the Tatami Galaxy? That's a, that's a show. That's a show? Okay, yeah. I couldn't remember. But um, I think it's very unique and very cool. <laughs> he, has, he has such a unique art style yeah. that it's hard to say whether it's it's not like a hi- a beautiful hyper realistic art style like your name or like yeah no it's it, there's like nothing that. about it is hyper realistic yeah it's not even it's he's not trying to be realistic yeah definitely not he's i mean but it's pretty like i mean like not a short walk on girl older and it's very unique though it's very minimalist yes it's it minimalist is. and maximalist at the same time See, that's what i was trying to say i was like <laughs> it's it's not that it's not that it's like a lower quality animation because there's ton- it's like there's tons so much of details. happening there's yes tons of details in it but like think like low shading yeah um there's a low color palette like it in a night of short walk on girl in particular there's yeah. there's a much less color is used but there's a lot more lines that are moving that's probably the best way to describe mm-hmm. it um that compared to something like Lou Over the Wall, yeah. which I think is some parts of it can fit into that beautiful style. Yeah, definitely. Because like especially with like the way that the water moves and the way that it like can distort people's. I mean, like if you think of like you know your face underwater, the way it distorts it and moves it and shapes it. Right. That is drawn very beautifully, but then also you get parts where literally it's like crown drawn. Yeah. animation so it, it's all over the place but i think it's really unique and cool it mm-hmm. adds to the storytelling by like changing the style like that definitely yeah and some other notable movies that um are by a bunch of different other directors these are movies that like y- as an anime fan you should probably watch these so first off we have akira super influential movie mm-hmm. um it's also a really pretty movie. Yeah, like, it is. Well done. Pretty might be the wrong word. It's it's a nice looking. Yeah. Because it's not pretty. It's pretty disgusting. <laughs> but like, it, it looks still nice. looks nice. The yes. animation holds up so well. Yes. Um, Ghost in the Shell. Looks nice. It, it still looks nice. There's, I would say, watch the original. Definitely. Don't watch any of the remakes. Just go straight for the original. Mm-hmm. Um it's boring <laughs> i'm not gonna lie it's it, boring it's, and it's kind of hard to follow like, there's like 30 minutes that are really boring the first because it's like the I beginning think it's is like pretty an, good i think it's like an hour and 45 maybe <laughs> two hours long the first hour great like there's action you can understand what's happening yeah and then at that like hour mark it just drops off and i fall asleep every time yeah it's hard to get through yeah um there in that middle section i couldn't tell you what happened in it i can tell you what how it begins and i can tell you how it ends yeah but that's about it (laughs) it's it's a lot of philosophy talk yeah and a lot of like the self yeah like theories of the self and like what the self is and because it's an android yeah movie so ai movie um it's no never mind i was i was thinking of something else Mm mm-hmm um then i do have your name it's such an inf- like influential movie and i think it's good <laughs> i don't think it's bad i think it's it's a good i think it's a good movie uh-huh. it's just not like the best anime movie ever made <laughs> like i do think that you should watch it though strictly for the fact of its like historical standpoint mm-hmm. um then also vampire hunter d another movie that's like it's called like one of the best anime movies ever made i think it came out in like the 90s Um, so the movie the well vampire hunter d bloodlust yes vampire hunter d bloodlust yes that came out in the year 2000 in 2000 okay yes so the like 
it's a tiny history lesson, essentially. So I'll go ahead and say I also was not a huge fan of Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. Yeah. Whenever we watched it. It's like okay. <laughs> it also same same issue of like a pretty interest it's an interesting premise. Yeah. Interesting characters. Interesting setting. Yeah, but Just... somewhere in there it got kinda of boring. Yeah. Um But it's as you can probably tell about vampires. Yeah. It's about the son of Dracula, so he's like half vampire. Um, but it is, well, the original, like, manga was drawn by, what's his name? We have his book. Oh, um, Amano. Amano. (laughs) We have, um, a copy of Amano's works. (laughs) But, uh, the original, like, manga was drawn by Amano, and Amano's style is very unique and pretty much impossible to replicate in an animated form. Oh, definitely, yeah. So, with that in mind, the original make, make like anim- animation of Vampire Hunter D kind of flopped mm-hmm. in, in Japan. <laughs> but in the West, for some reason, it was a hit. And Americans like really liked it. I don't know, I haven't seen that one. Yeah. But the what happened then was in the year 2000, they made Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust, but instead of making it for, like... Japan. For Japan, like, with a Japanese um, dubbing, they made it for an English dubbing. So, like, the mouth movements follow English and not Japanese, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it had to be redubbed in Japanese. But that's just because it was so popular at the time in America which once again we don't 100% get (laughs) yeah um it's one of those movies that's like it has historic significance yeah so you should probably watch it but we're not gonna blame you if you don't yeah (laughs) it's uh yeah now oh and it's a western also yes by the way it's a (laughs) desert western it's a desert western yeah see yeah okay my thing is that it's like, for me personally, it's like there are shows that do the same thing better. Yeah, that's fair. So, like, for example, like, um, it has, it's like the same setting as, like, Trigun. Mm-hmm, but it isn't a comedy. But it isn't a comedy. Mm-hmm. And so it's just kind of boring. Yeah. But, yeah, I agree. And then, like... Shows like um, Helsing, mm-hmm. it it has the the uh, Alucard is a badass like element, mm-hmm. but it's just more exciting. Mm-hmm. And so it's like it it did it did what it did, mm-hmm. but there are some better versions of it. Yeah. Okay. Now. I don't know if your name... I I couldn't exact... I'm pretty sure your name kind of started this. Mm-hmm. Which would make sense because, once again, we talked about how your name kind of restarted the... Yes. The anime movies for what they are. Yes. Kind of. And, like... Or started this trend of, like... Of, like, here is a normal boy and then... Here is like a girl, and something is kind of unique about her in some way. But these are all movies that like all kind of mush together into the same movie for me. Yeah, they kind of look the same. Your name, a silent voice. I want to eat your pancreas. Patma inverted. Weathering with you. <laughs> Josie the tiger and the fish. These are all movies that like some I admit two of them I haven't watched, but like. You can just look at them, and you're like, oh yeah, this is a Your Name movie. Right. Are they all high school? Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay, yeah. I think... Um... Or technic. Okay, technically, A Silent Voice isn't. Really? It's not? Um, they not I'm... in high school? I thought they were. I'm pretty sure they, like, just graduated. Oh, okay. But still, it's, like, kind of high school. Yeah, it's young adult. <laughs> young adult, there you yeah. go. Um, yeah, I do think that it... I mean, the high school 
romance is popular. Yeah. It is a popular genre. Maybe it's something that's more uh, more viewer friendly, more mm-hmm. audience friendly than something that is high fantasy or high sci-fi or in some other way um, outside of the mundane. Yeah. Which I think also helps them not only, I mean, be more relatable, but in turn be more successful. Yeah. But like, I'm... I, I've only noticed this since your name came out. This mm-hmm. has probably happened before, but this is at least what I've noticed. You know, I every season, every season, I go on my anime list, I look at the movies come out, and basically every season I see a, oh, this is a Your Name movie. A Your Name movie, yeah. Yeah. Because it's successful. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And whether or not it's, like, good or not, it kind of doesn't matter. True. I mean, because someone's going to like it. So, I mean, people are going to watch it and they're going to be like, oh, it's good. The same people that watched your name are going to watch these movies. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I do actually want to point out, though, um, your name may be the blueprint, mm-hmm. but personally, I think some of these are better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, A Silent Voice came out, I think, a year or two after um, your name came out. Right. Personally, I think it's, a like, astronomically better. Mm-hmm. I just don't think it had the same marketing as your name did. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of in in marketing. Yeah. Like, not a lot of um, promotion from the creators themselves, but a lot of anime fans telling other anime fans to watch it. Yeah. Same with I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. Mm-hmm. That is such an emotional movie. Like, it is, it is so good. Mm-hmm. It is wonderful. I'll have to make you watch it. <laughs> because it is, it is probably... It might be one of my favorite anime movies. Mm-hmm. Like, it is just so good. Um, but yeah, there... This is kind of what a lot of anime... Right now, anime movies are kind of like... Um, spinoffs? Or your name. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's kind of what we are in anime movies right now. Yes. Or we're just having, like, the the, the eyegasm-ish yeah. kind of stuff. Like, that's what bubble. I call, that's what I call like, your name movies. Yes. Like, eyegasm movies. Yeah, but then there's, I mean... Oh, wait, no, they are separate. You're right. I'm about to say, right. well, Bubble, um, well, not that we, we haven't seen Bubble, but we watched the preview for Bubble, and all we can tell is that it's, like, Weird parkour, and then there's with a, a quirky girl. With a, there's a quirky girl who wears two different colored shoes. I don't know, but like they probably it's still some other yeah, but the same like premise of like it's just a guy. Yeah, and I mean like he can do parkour. I guess that's pretty cool, but um, and the girl doesn't even seem like it's a like in the preview the girl didn't even seem like it's like a huge part, but she's like the face of the movie, right? Of yeah. course. So yeah. As far as the anime movies go, I haven't. I also haven't seen too much outside of this. Yeah. Recently, there is there is like a period of time in like high school slash college where like I wasn't in the mood to watch any shows. I just watched movies, mm-hmm. and so I've I've seen a good amount of anime movies. Mm-hmm. Good amount of them. Eh. Yeah. But like. I don't know. Anime movies are typically pretty good, honestly. Mm-hmm. And it does have to do with like that higher budget. That budget, yeah. Like, um, there's, you know, actually, there's one thing that I didn't add on this, mm-hmm. which are, um, I feel like they're not really like a thing anymore, but like recap movies. Mm. So like, like Evangelion. Uh, Evangelion's different. Of course, it is. it's not a recap. Technically, only okay. the only the first movie is a recap. Yeah, that's what I meant. Though. The it's rest like, is it's like the first movie, mm-hmm. like that being a recap. Right. Um, but like Gundam, mm-hmm. Gundam has an entire like, I think it's like three movies for the for the original Gundam. Mm-hmm. Like they have it in movie form, mm-hmm. and it just skips all the filler, mm-hmm. and is like honestly a little easier to digest. Yeah. <laughs> Which I will say with. You know, I'm I'm not like the biggest fan of recap movies, mm. but like sometimes with like old shows that have like a hundred episodes, sometimes the recap movies are better graphics. I mean, or better animation, mm-hmm. and they get the point across more because there's no like 
filler right. episodes. Yeah. So maybe in like with like older shows, maybe that's the way to go. Yeah. You know, if you don't want to sit down, devote yourself to like a hundred plus episodes. Right. Yeah. There's another show that I watch that I watched the recap instead of the show. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> But I think that's all I have to say today. Yeah, I think that's going to be it. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in to this episode mm-hmm. of Kanishi Yeeha. I'm Natalie. And I'm Jared. And we'll see you all in the next episode. Yeehaw. Yeehaw.